Hi everyone, today our lesson is on electron flow. When you draw a Lewis structure, it's not that there's always one perfect picture of a molecule that we can draw. Um, many times there are different perspectives of a molecule you might want to consider. Just like, let's say, Picasso when he was painting a person's face. So let's say he had a beautiful woman and he's painting her face, but he wants to look at her from all angles. And so that's what he tried to do in his art, is to try to represent a three-dimensional object or person, let's say, uh, on a two-dimensional piece of canvas. So chemists try to do the same thing. We try to represent the true nature of a molecule, but we may only need, be able to represent one thing at a time in each individual structure. And the implication is that all of those pictures or snapshots or structures actually are some mixture in terms of what the real thing is. So for example, I have drawn down here benzene. Benzene is a molecule six-sided ring and it's got pi bonds that alternate here, here, and here, and here, here, and here. You could probably see that it doesn't matter which way you draw benzene, but it turns out that benzene is neither of these, really. It's a combination or a resonance hybrid of these pictures. So these are what we call individual resonance structures. They are possible ways of looking at the molecule or drawing the molecule. And then the real way to think about benzene, though, is some hybrid of all that. The, the way that you really think about benzene is that these pi electrons are not half of the time this way and half of the time this way. And the arrow does not mean that the electrons are flipping back and forth from this orientation to that one. It's actually that the orbitals that contain the pi electrons are able to contain the electrons so that the electrons are spread out or delocalized over the molecule. And that helps to stabilize the molecule and keep it lower energy. So here's a picture of those orbitals. In hybridization terms, these are the unhybridized p orbitals. And they're all in the same plane, allowing for the electrons to spread out. Here's another picture of it, uh, where the electrons are spread out over the ring. My analogy for this is a piece of toast. So you might put globs of butter on each corner of the toast, but in, in the end, you're going to spread the butter around. And that's what the molecule really is, are the electrons spread around. And, and by spreading electrons around, they repel each other less, so you have something more stable. So the resonance hybrid is not always drawn. It's sometimes difficult to combine all the different perspectives into one drawing. But for benzene, it's not too bad. We can draw the resonance hybrid of benzene as a six-membered ring with the electrons spread around. And to do that, you sometimes see pictures of benzene like this. And so this is what we call the resonance hybrid. And there is proof for this in that one could experimentally determine what is the bond length around benzene in these carbon-carbon bonds. And it turns out that it's not that you have a short bond, a long bond, a short bond, a long bond, because remember the double bonds are shorter and stronger than the single bonds. You don't see that alternating uh, pattern. You see that the bond lengths are actually identical. So whereas you would measure the bond angle in these structures as 2, 1, 2, 1, all the way around, it turns out that it's actually 1 and a half, 1 and a half, 1 and a half, 1 and a half, all the way around. So you see it's um, this sort of averaging of the two structures.